What is up guys? We are back with another BIOS video. And this BIOS is on the Gigabyte B550i Aorus Pro AX, which is an excellent mini ITX motherboard. If you haven't checked out this motherboard, it has everything. It's, it's a really great motherboard. So definitely check out the link below for a full written review on this motherboard. I can't recommend it enough. But of course, this is our BIOS walkthrough, kind of to give you an idea of what options are in the BIOS. Maybe if you're looking for a specific option, we'll go over that. We'll also go over some basic overclocking, nothing in you know crazy detail. Now, if you want to get into this BIOS, all you have to do is continually hit the delete button when you turn on your computer or restart your computer, just hit that, keep on hitting that delete button and you should eventually come to the screen, which you see right here, which is the easy mode. I love to see the easy mode just for the fact that it gets most of the things done you wanna do when you're doing your initial build. Um, so up here we have information on our BIOS. Oh, one thing that Gigabyte needs to fix is this mouse speed is incredibly slow. Um, I have, my mouse at the highest dpi i think it's 16,000 dpi and i literally have to go all the way across my um my mouse pad here just to even move it a little bit um they really need to fix that if i actually go down to the lowest dpi setting on my mouse which i believe is 800 like <laughs> this is me going across the entire like that's my entire mouse pad so um there we go back to the highest dpi which again i think is 16,000. so they need to fix this mouse speed. I don't know what the, what the deal is with that. Um, but anyways, we have our information. This is the latest version of the BIOS, which is F10, um, which gives you the update for Ryzen 5000 series processors. But you have all the information on the BIOS version, your CPU processor, the you know your memory. You have your DRAM uh, stats over here. We have our CPU frequencies and temperatures and voltages as well as yeah, temperatures uh, for a bunch of different things all right up here. Under DRAM stats, we can enable or disable XMP profile. This is one of the first things that you're gonna wanna do when you build your computer is enable your XMP profile in your memory. Just click it, we can see it, and you can see what it is. And it, just by clicking it, it enables it. That's all you have to do, click it, and then we'll eventually save. And that's what you go ahead and do. Over here, we can see available devices. So we have one hard drive, um, which is in number P2. Under PC Express, we have one PC Express card. Of course, we only have one PC Express slot on this. M.2, if we had any drives, they would show up here, but we don't have those. So it just gives you a rundown. Maybe a drive's not working. You can see if the BIOS actually sees it. Um, so you have all that here. Under boot sequence, you can see our boot sequence. If we just click here, we can order these how we want. So if you need to move um, you know, a boot drive or whatever you need to do, you can do it all right here. Smart Fan 5 um, will just show you your fan speeds in real time. We only have our CPU fan running. I believe if we click here. Yeah, we can go into the actual Smart Fan 5. Allows you to set the fan speeds for the headers on the board. I believe there's only two, um, maybe three including the CPU, yeah, there's two fan headers and the CPU fan. So you can set all of those, um, you know, different modes and things like that. You can also see your temperatures here in real time and you can set like a fan warning. If, you know, the fan uh, is disabled, you wanna, you wanna make sure there's a warning when you start your PC, um, temperature warnings, things like that, you can go ahead and do, we'll get out of that. Um, over here, we can turn RAID on or off. You can change the language. We can go into advancement, which we will. We just showed you Smart Fan 5. There's also QFlash, which we just used to update our BIOS. It allows you to <clears throat> easily update your BIOS from a flash drive. Super simple. Um, this board also has the QFlash where you don't even need to turn on the, uh, the motherboard. You just plug a flash drive in, hit the button, and it does it. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, but you have it here, super easy to do. That's how I did it. I just downloaded the BIOS to a flash drive, ran this, selected it, and you're good to go. Save and exits, and then favorites. So you do get the favorites menu, which actually drops you into advanced mode anyways. Um, but if you want to toggle between easy mode and advanced mode, it's just F2. Um, but when we go into the advanced mode, we have a favorites. You can add any setting 
that's in the BIOS into your favorites. So that's really great because there's some settings you wanna to get to really quickly. As you can see, I have CPU clock ratio, CPU clock control, XMP, V-Core, load line calibration, CSM support. Like those things are the, the options that I would use most often. So they're right here so I don't have to go through a couple menus to find them. So it's great that you have that. Over here, you have real-time stats. Um, which we kind of saw on, on the easy mode as well. Sorry, again, it's so hard to move this this mouse. It's, it's just so hard. So under tweaker, um, this is everything that you're gonna do to tune your system to do overclocking um, and, and things like that. So by default, everything's on auto. If we did wanna do some basic overclocking, so this is Ryzen system, it's super easy to do basic overclocking. So you would leave CPU ratio mode to all cores, CPU clock ratio, you would change this to whatever you're going for. So um, it's at 38 now. We can, you know, say we wanna to go to four gigahertz, which isn't a heavy overclock by any means. We just hit that and that's what that's set for. Um, advanced CPU settings, you can turn um, different CPU features on and off. You can see them all right here. Again, if you're doing anything, it, mostly everything should be set to auto. So you can go ahead and do that. Oops, no. Um, you can see here, uh, again, I have to use this mouse, which I hate doing in this BIOS, but um, when you exit, it will show you your last modified setting, which is really great, but I didn't mean to do that. So uh, let's hit no. And we'll go back. Why is this not letting me? Oh, wait. There we go. CPU settings. But usually you hit escape to get out of this. But I guess you, when you hit escape, oh, I guess it did let me go back. Okay. And any, anyways, um, we go down to XMP again. We just set our XMP profile. Advanced memory settings will allow you to see all your sub timings and your main timings. If you wanted to tighten your timings up or change any sub, -time, sub timings, you can go ahead and do it here. SPD info will show you your SPD inf information for your, um, for your installed memory. CPU V core. So again, if you are overclocking, you're probably gonna wanna change this. By default, it is auto. There's an auto and a normal, um, but we would like to go, again, if you're overclocking, you would probably wanna start at around 1.3 volts, something like that. Um, and that's it, that's, that's literally basic overclocking. So this would put our CPU clock ratio again at 40 or four gigahertz, which again is no massive overclock, but that's on all of our cores because we set our CPU ratio. And then we set our V core to 1.3. Again, you can even probably go lower than that um, to, to give our CPU enough power so that it can maintain that overclock. That is just basic overclocking. We're not gonna go more than that, but that is just the basic overclocking. We have all of our voltages down here for a bunch of different things, our DRAM voltages, all that kind of stuff you can uh, change if you need to. And then there's CPU VRM settings, um, your load line calibration. If you're doing some pretty insane overclocking, you're probably gonna wanna change this. Um, there's a bunch of different settings, normal, standard, low, medium, high, turbo, extreme, ultra extreme. So you can go ahead and do that. Same thing with the SOC uh, load line calibration. You can go ahead and change that as well. And we'll go over to settings, platform power. Um, this is all power related settings like resume on alarm, um, power loading, you know, wake on land, things like that. You can change IO ports. Um, again, this is everything to do with your IO ports on the board itself. Like you can turn the LAN controller on or off. Um, USB configuration, again, legacy USB support. Everything should be um, enabled by default, minus port 60, 64 emulation. Um, there needs to be like mouse acceleration on there because this, again, this mouse is so slow for some reason. NVMe configuration, we don't have any NVMe devices installed, but if we did, they would of course show up here. SATA configuration, um, SATA mode, AHCI by default. You can enable RAID if you want. You can see our drive. Well, I, I guess we can't select our drive down here, but you can see our drive, which is right there. That is installed. Network stack configuration. And you can see information on our Realtek uh, 2.5 gig LAN controller. You can see all of that as well. Go out of there. Miscellaneous. Um, LEDs in system power state 
or power on state. So this allows you to turn off the RGB lighting on the board. There is a strip of RGB lighting towards the far edge of the board. If you want those just, just to not turn on ever, you just switch this to off. Also the LEDs in sleep hibernation and soft states. A lot of times um, people want your RGB lighting, at least for their motherboard, on when you have the system actually powered off. It's off by default, but you can of course turn it on here as well. Um, T or TPM stuff, trusted computing. Again, we don't have a TPM device, but if we did, we could configure it there. AMD CBS. This is a bunch of AMD AMD CBS options. I'm not going to go through these. This is very. You won't need to change any of these if you're just doing basic overclocking or anything like that. AMD overclocking. Again, you don't need to go into this menu to do basic overclocking, but we can go in here. It will make you accept uh, because if you change any of these, it essentially voids your warranty. Um, again, this is like your CPU frequency. Um, you can change your CPU voltage in um, CPU core voltage, uh, CPU core count controls, all that stuff, SMT controls. This is everything to do with the processor when it comes to power regulation, voltages, timings. Um, but again, you can do it easily without even going into this menu. PC, oops, PC health um, will just give you real time, your voltages, no, uh, no, uh, what's it called? No temperatures, which is a little weird to see in there, but we don't have that. And then I keep on hitting the wrong button. We go to smart fan five. It's the same smart fan five. And here we do have um, our temperatures, but it would be nice to see that in PC health as well. System info um, just gives you all of your information on your system, process, the BIOS version that you're running, BIOS date, which is of course good to see too, to see if you know this is the most up-to-date BIOS that you're running. Oops, I keep on hitting the wrong buttons on my keyboard. <laughs> um, Plug-in devices info. Again, this is just what we saw on that main screen as well. We can see all the devices that we have installed. And then we also have Q Flash in this menu, which we showed you earlier. Under boots, uh, you have your boot option priorities. You have, um, you know, boot on LAN. It, this is also where you're gonna find your user password and administrative password. So you can set those in here as well. And then save and exit, um, we have load optimized defaults, which I love to see because I mess things up in the BIOS and I just wanna go back to the beginning. So loading optimized defaults is great to see here. And then we do have boot override. I talk about this so much, but if you set your boot priority to your hard drive, but you wanna initially boot to a flash drive um, to load Windows, and then when it does its restart, you don't have to worry about it booting to that flash drive again. You just do it this way. It just makes it so easy. Um, but that is basically it again. This video is not to dive deep into the settings. It's just to show you what you have, show you how to basic overclock. Again, overclocking is incredibly easy. You just select your CPU clock ratio to what you want it to be. Um, again, we can go up if we wanted, but you know, we can go up to five gigahertz. Um, there we go, 50. And then we would just change our vCore or leave it, you know, 1.3, but you want to set a default vCore for sure because you don't want it to be set on auto and then have it push a ton of voltage, um, unwanted voltage to your CPU. That is basically all you really have to do to overclock. It's, it's not all that hard. You don't have to go into that AMD overclocking menu if you really don't want to. And of course, you can always overclock within Windows using the AMD Ryzen Master software. So that makes it easy as well. Um, but we'll go back into the easy mode. This BIOS does have pretty much everything that you would want. Um, everything's easy to find. This easy mode gives you everything as far as setting your boot sequence, as far as doing your XMP profile, you just click it and it's enabled. You can see all your devices. You can see all your fans and configure your fans before you, you know, and to do that first initial load of Windows. So it's all right here. Just please Gigabyte, fix this mouse issue. It is just way too slow for any human. Uh, but besides that, that is the BIOS here on the uh, Gigabyte. B550i Aorus Pro AX motherboard. If you have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And we'll see you guys in the next video.